Uh, welcome to Hot Graves and Omens, uh, where the main question we ask is, is farting in your hand and eating it like a sandwich illegal? Fart into your own hand and eat it like a sandwich. Fart in your own hand and eat it like a sandwich. I've never wondered that. I'll be honest. Yeah. But is it illegal? Probably not. That's goddamn right. Because we're in America. Up top. <laughs> Did you fart in him? Marty, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Just having some fun. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Hot's Graves and Omens. My name is Fred Stewart. With me, as always, my lovely co host. It's me. Hello. Welcome. It's Taylor. Hi. Hi. Spirit's asleep on the floor. She's, She's asleep. not in my lap this time. No. I put her in the room. She immediately just out. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, I know what to do. Yeah. And with us running cameras and sound is Marty Cowick. It is I, Marty Cowick. Marty. It is me. Marty. Marty. None other than this boy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, I got some some true crime news and some other general news this week. So um, Alabama recently did a very controversial death uh, method for uh, executions. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys heard about this. You guys saw not. anything about this? The death -ids. I heard about it. Um, it's fucking pretty brutal. If you go all the way back through the history of Hans Graves and Omens, the second episode we ever did <laughs> was... Through the history of Alabama. I'm like, I'm pretty sure there's some brutal shit. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to even get into that. <laughs> but <laughs> but if you go back to the history of Hans Graves and Omens, you can go back to our second episode, which is botched executions, right? Yeah. And where I painstakingly for almost, I think it was like almost two hours, talked about just botched execution after botched execution. This is something that I probably would have thrown in there. Oh. So the execution of convicted murderer Kenneth uh, Eugene Smith was done by using nitrogen hypoxia. So oh, that is then suffocated him. Yeah. So essentially pumping nitrogen into the room, depriving his brain of oxygen until his death. Um, and this guy was a shit bag. So don't feel too bad for him. But at the same time, Jesus Christ. Um, so the execution was carried out um, this most recent Thursday. Um, we're recording this on the 26th. So last week essentially um or yeah thursday night so maybe yes maybe last night or the week before uh mark the first time that nitrogen hypoxia a process that aims to use uh, asphyxiation by forcing an individual to take to inhale pure, pure nitrogen or lethally uh high concentration of it through a gas mass was used finally thank god finally used uh, to kill somebody, um, the the marshal uh, of the of the county said, "What occurred last night was textbook. As of last night, nitrogen hypoxia is a means of, of execution. is no longer an untested method. It's a proven one, which is a fucking pretty gangster way to say you just kill the guy." Yeah. Um, so make it even worse for this guy. Smith had requested the method of death after surviving a botched lethal injection in 2022. Oh. Which, fuck me. Uh, but his attorneys argue that he was um, being used as a test subject and human rights activists. Everybody got real fucking upset. Surprise, surprise. But I mean, if he fuck asked for guy. it, then... I mean... I forgot to mention this guy from CBS News. I forgot to give that... To, uh, yeah, well, I mean, y yes. Yes and no. Um, basically, it went through jumps and hurdles. Um, so he was it's it's fucking bad dude so basically he goes into this room right and they start pumping him pumping the room full of uh nitrogen right mm -hmm. from the moment they started putting nitrogen into the mask and into, into that room to the moment of his death was 20 minutes oh, where he man. would he would shoot up in bed gasp for air grab it out of his throat fall back down convulse a little bit Lay still, stand back, get back up, start choking again Ugh. for 20 fucking minutes until he eventually died. Um, super, super scary. Um, but um, he was convicted um, uh, for a killing way back in 1989 wow. of uh, Elizabeth Sunnet. Um, they're, the family is obviously overjoyed that this guy's dead. Yeah. But, uh, wow, dude. <laughs> That's wild. Super fucking brutal way to die. Does Oregon do death penalty? Uh, they do not. They not do anymore. not? Not anymore. 
I propose that they start doing death penalty, but the method of death penalty is they sit him next to uh, the door plug on an Alaska Airlines flight. <laughs> That's fucking... <funny. laughs> on a Max 9. Topical. <laughs> uh, that's great. Uh, I, I, I always think that... I want to get, I want to get like the true most violent offenders, like the people who are like, I don't feel any sympathy for what I did. Yeah, I'm happy that I killed all those people. I'm happy I did that. You know, they right. they have no sympathy, and then we take them all and we throw them in like 500 acres of like Utah, and then just go like last one, last one to leave alive wins, <laughs> <laughs> and then just let them fucking fight each other to the death. You know, like death race, but yeah. without the racing part. <laughs> well, they did make a movie like that, and uh, I forget what it's called. It's not Hunger Games, but it's like, uh, it was before Hunger Games mm -hmm. came out, but it was fucking Stone Cold Steve Austin was the main character. Oh, dude, so he's just like, I'm going to drink a beer. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. And I'm going to kill this guy. What? Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, let's... This is super off topic. Do you have... 37 open tabs. Yeah, I was looking at acting stuff. Don't worry. So many open tabs. Yeah, that's fun. I have like, I think the most open tabs I've ever had on I'm my not phone perfect, Taylor. Like it's called The Condemned. I'm not, I'm not perfect. <laughs> it's so many. Taylor, I'm not perfect. Okay. The, the movie that I'm thinking of is called The Condemned, oh. and it's exactly the plot line you just described. They take all these fucking super, you know, people that are on death row that are horrific, and they put them on an island. And it's injury. like Hunger Games. <laughs> that is a very interesting movie topic, Marty. Yeah, yeah, Marty. Thanks. On to the you next story. You listening to him at all, I you? was. Mm -hmm. Gotta watch it. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Dude, he's an American hero. I, I could literally give a shit about the rest of the movie, dude. That's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah. Because I had a beer. What? And I had another beer. What? <laughs> so, this comes from Newser. Um... Headline just states, Amish family goes to Walmart, has horse and buggy stolen. Oh. Um, so it comes out of Sturgis, Michigan. Uh, Amish family went to Walmart, which fucking shame on them. You made your choice. Um, they can go to stores. They just, can't, no. they just can't use the electricity. No, they can't touch anything. They're not allowed to touch anything. Dude. I don't think that's how that's, that works. That's, they're, I'm not, I'm not, I, I don't know if that's necessarily for them, but I mean that's just as a personal statement. <laughs> that I don't think they should be allowed to touch anything. It was yeah. made by machines. <laughs> Unless it was carved by a guy named fucking, like... I don't know, Tober. Juan. I was going <laughs> to Juan. Yeah, the one. Just W-A-N. W -A -N. <laughs> like the one Asian dude who's in the, who's in the fucking commune. I love it, dude. He's like, he's like, honestly, this place is great. Um, but um, there's one Asian kid in this commune and he makes all of our shoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crazy, dude. That's crazy. Well, he started out building iPhones. Yeah. Um, Come on, dude. You're fucking sick if you're watching this on an iPhone, yeah, dude. Yeah, gross. You're, you laughed at that. Yeah. You're and you have an iPhone. So fucked up. And if you get butter by that, if you get butter by that, get to remember this is also a comedy show. None of what we're saying is actually serious. Anyway, um, he they went to a they went to a Walmart, and I assume they bought uh, flashlights and fucking Cheez Its. I don't and, think, I and don't think <laughs> they sell one of those things at Walmart. Yeah, they probably don't sell Cheez Its anymore, huh? Yeah. Uh, but they they <laughs> they came out of the store to find their horse and buggy. Was gone. Oh my god! Reports of uh, Fox Two Detroit. Uh, luckily, a truck driver parked in the store's parking lot witnessed a thief come up and just simply take it. Um, later Did that they evening, leave the they, didn't lock, they, it, they didn't lock their doors. Yeah. So I don't know what they expected. <laughs> just like, all right, <laughs> all right, buddy, stay here. <laughs> it's like, all right, he's locked up. <laughs> you know, putting a bike lock on your horse, <laughs> trying to start uh, it. It's like. <laughs> 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 yeah, dude. Uh, later that evening, police recovered the horse uh, unharmed. What about the buggy? And the buggy, obviously. Oh, uh, and arrested a 31 year old woman at a nearby motel. Uh, I don't know why she did it, said uh, Sergeant Aaron Moore of the Sturgeon Police. I've never had an Amish horse and buggy stolen in my 20 years as an officer. <laughs> uh, she faces um, charges of larceny and larceny of livestock. And grand theft buggy. And, and just being too cool of a bitch. No, um, pretty good. Uh, the other one here. Um, we all have bad days. 
<laughs> you know, we we all have just, you know, there's just feel like you just have some days where anything can, um, you know, send you over the edge. Not like Marvin Hemeyer over the edge, but, you know, you might just snap, you know, might get a little grouchy, get a little, little upset. Again, this comes from Newser. Um, Alberto de Barros um, from Florida. Of course, classic happens in Florida. Um, he he's being currently he's currently being charged for battery after his sandwich wasn't allegedly cut at a subway. So he he was <laughs> real hungry. I'm so uh, I guess yeah. So. <laughs> Per the arrest report uh, the, from the uh, Martin County Sheriff's Office, uh, they responded to a call January 9th about uh, one of the fast food eatery locations in Stewart um, in reference to a disturbance. According to the deputy who filed the report, a customer Alberto de Barros had become agitated when a female subway worker, quote, after finding his sandwich was not separated, words were apparently exchanged. De Barros began causing a disruptive scene. Uh, an employee decided that she was no longer going to assist him. Just, you know, being like, hey, man, you're coming off a little hot. I don't need this right now. All right. Uh, DeBarros then hopped on the phone. But as he was talking and still having a fucking meltdown in the middle of the subway, he then um, does the only rational thing and throws his fucking sandwich across the counter, hitting her in the mid to lower body section per the report. Uh, deputy says that DeBars then left the restaurant, but not before the worker was able to spot his license plate number. Uh, deputy then tracked him down to his home. The man admitted that he had been in an argument and he insisted insisted he had thrown the sandwich at the counter not the worker um that was wrong <laughs> <laughs> and he was the first person to die of alabama's new death penalty <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're, they're like extra died from go. florida yeah, they're like they're like get this other guy out of here who did this murder and get this <laughs> sick fuck in here and let's suffocate him to my, death so for his last meal he made that bitch make him another sandwich <laughs> yeah my question though is so was the sandwich just not cut at all? It like, just they, wasn't cut at all. I, did they just not? Put well, I mean, I think it was kind of hard to tell when it was everywhere afterward, you know? <laughs> yeah. did they, um, they just, like, didn't cut it? I don't just know, cut dude. the toppings, like, He wasn't like, hey, excuse like, me, would you mind cutting my sandwich? He was like, he's like, you fucking fuck? bitch, I'll fucking kill you! Yeah, you, he just immediately got into it, yeah. So as he, a subway worker, though, how do you know, how do you make a sandwich without cutting it? Yeah, well, here, well, she cut it like I, I don't know. The wrong, I, like, I, li you're starting to sound like this guy. <laughs> all right, you're gonna, I'm you're, really you're, confused. You're, you're gonna pop off on a subway one of these days. Uh, <laughs> what helped essentially clinch the arrest for Nabarros, however, was uh, once the arresting deputy got to view the surveillance footage. There, you can go uh, off the, about the sandwich, Taylor. <laughs> yeah, the the deputy <laughs> saw Nabarros. <laughs> Swipe the sandwich off the counter, which then subsequently strikes the employee with the sandwich. Uh, he was arrested with battery uh, and released on a thousand dollar bond. And he's supposed to appear in court on February 1st. So hopefully we'll get more updates on this um, as it continues. And, um, you know, we've, we've been joking around. We've been having some fun time reading these stories. And I want to get serious with you guys. You know, there's been a lot of there's been a lot of issues lately with aviation you know people are afraid to get on planes people are having hard times on planes we had that one lady do the whole thing we're like that motherfucker's not real people are acting wild mm -hmm. hold on before you get into this let me let me move, move this back real quick because i feel like it's going to get a little uh <laughs> a little, mm -hmm. could get a little crazy i mm -hmm. i think that is a fair <laughs> so i've read the headline i i, I, think sim I simply just you know it's just one of those things you know i want I want to feel safe on planes again, you know? Yeah. And I can't feel safe on planes when shit like this is happening. So this comes from the New York Post. Um, an American Airlines plane was reportedly forced to return uh, back to the gate due to high wind and a disgruntled passenger's smelly farts. Oh, yeah. uh, the the uh, dude, the, man, they fucking roast this dude. So the flight was going from Phoenix, Arizona to Austin, Texas. Um was still on the ground at the time, had not taken off. Oh. Um, 
But, quote, before most people had boarded, I observed this man was audibly disgruntled about something, maybe hung over a rough day. I don't know. But as soon as he sat down, he was grumbling under his breath. Someone like, fucking hell, fucking piece of shit, you motherfucker. Just getting, just getting into it, getting really upset, this, this user wrote. Uh, after a majority of passengers had boarded, the man exclaimed, you thought that was rude? How about this smell? And then proceeds to just start farting. Oh my God. Just nonstop. <laughs> I, the, they, they said in a quote, I don't know what provoked the comment, <laughs> but kind of funny over here. It was uncalled for, especially coming from a grown man on an airplane. Nonetheless, um, the passenger just kept excessively farting over and over again. Um, the man who purposely farted moments ago decided to loudly and uh, <laughs> condescendingly say, yeah, everybody, let's just eat the smelliest food possible all at the same time. <laughs> Dude, he's having a moment. He just, he just, he just fucking. What is he going just, on about? He's like, oh, okay, everybody, we just want to have a bad time on an airplane. <laughs> um, a man... Awful. And the row over reply, if you don't like it, you can fly private, private, to which the fart man says, that's so fucking rude. And another person nearby chimes, I think we all agree you're the rude one here. To one, at one point, uh, flight attendants intervened, told passengers and the train to get sure that that's enough. Everybody needs to stop. The plane was taxiing into the runway, but came to a stop. Announcements came overhead and said, apologies for the interruption. We're going to return to the gate. We'll give you some more info when we have it. Uh, they get back to the gate. <laughs> the flight attendant comes back and informs Fartman that he is not staying on the flight. He replies with, I don't understand. <laughs> and she tells him to get off the plane. The man gets his, grabs his bags and grumbles and gets off the aircraft. And uh, they all breathed a sigh of relief. And the flight was delayed for about 15 to 30 minutes. That guy's my hero. Like, what if he's on the no fly list for farting? Yeah. It's like, what are you on the no-fly list for? It's like, I said some crazy shit on the internet, and, or I threatened I threatened the cockpit. And then it's like, what'd you do? It's like, <laughs> I farted on a plane so bad we had to <laughs> go back to the gate. <laughs> but it's just, it's such a funny idea to think of this man in the seat just being like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm being rude, am I? And just like, just, just like farting and almost shitting in his pants, dude. This is great. Ugh. That's comedy. And that's why comedy. I'm afraid to fly on planes now. It's fair. Comedy. Not, not because of guys like that, because I'm afraid that I'm going to be that guy. <laughs> I'm afraid. I don't want to do it. Don't make me do it. I'm not making you do anything. Don't make me do it. Today. I'm not uh, going to make you do anyway, anything. Anyway, I've taken 10 minutes out of the podcast already. <laughs> talking about farts and... So what's today's episode about, Taylor? Dude, I'm just tired of talking about farts, dude. <laughs> I just don't... I don't know if... I don't know if... I don't know, dude. I just can't. I can't. I don't want to talk about it anymore, dude. Okay. We'll maybe talk about it too. I'm not. Do you before you okay. Please, please don't. I'm no. not doing anything. <laughs> Tay, please don't. I'm not Don't do this day. Our audio not, listeners not in front of the kids. can't see. What kids? The kids. <laughs> <laughs> don't do this in front of the kids, Tay. Listen, our don't. audio listeners don't. can't see. Dad still loves you. Okay. Um I still love you. I'm not okay. doing anything. Okay. I'm I still I still I still care. I'm just okay. I'm just here, man. Uncle Marty is Going out for cigarettes. And milk. He's probably jailing, but <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. He's probably beefing over there, dude. He's probably ripping the chub. <laughs> ripping the chub. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> There's so much oh, happening. what are we talking about? <laughs> I'm, he's I'm, still, he's still on the doc brain from last night. I yeah. fucking guess. Yeah, I was so tired. <laughs> I think that's why I'm so manic right now. Yeah, tired and hungry. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. All right, so we're gonna be talking about Judy Kendall. Who? I'm gonna get Asked. into it, dude. Up top, bro. Up top, Marty. <laughs> uh, <Hey>. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right, no. I'm keeping y'all apart. <laughs> Judy Kendall. Yeah. Uh, and we are talking about her abduction. Oh shit. We're talking Ooh, about shit. aliens. Aliens. Okay. Oh, good thing we have the manic cam. Mm-hmm. I knew it was gonna be needed. Good thing we have it. 
Good thing we maybe, have the manic cam. Maybe, Good maybe, thing maybe, we maybe, have maybe, it. Maybe, there we go. <laughs> it, you know, it's not as funny when I have to ask for it. <laughs> well, I didn't know you wanted it. You're, I thought you were like you weren't getting manic yet, so I'm waiting was, for you to get was, manic. Was, was, Fuck off, dude. Marty's I'm not, not paying I'm attention. Not, listen, I'm not manic. Okay, I'm never gonna be fucking manic, dude. <laughs> I like I'll you give you the manic cam when you deserve it, okay? <laughs> when you be the when you be the good little crazy psychopath, you'll get your little manic cam. <laughs> so let's let's talk about Judy Kendall. What's going on with Judy? All right. So on November twenty sixth of nineteen seventy two. Always in the seventies. Mm-hmm. That's just the time I almost wore. I have a top that I just got. It's very seventies theme, and I almost wore it today. Mm. Just. Be on topic. Yeah, I was gonna dress up like a like an alien for this, and I should have, mm. which is why I decided to wear my human suit instead. Because aren't we the real aliens? I mean, to aliens, yes. Yeah. Can we get that dark drum? <laughs> <laughs> there Thanks, we man. Go. It was just like that <laughs> that that like half a second of dead air was just like. Hmm, I feel like we're missing something. <laughs> I could. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. We're falling apart. What's going on? What's going on, Judy? All right. So, 28 year old legal secretary Judy Kendall and her younger sisters, Dannon and Becky, were driving home to Zamora from their mother's house in Bodega Bay. Uh, the sisters had left at and were planning to get home by 10 p.m. as the trip should have taken about two and a half hours, but they allowed themselves at most three hours mm -hmm. to get back home. Um, so they left their grandmother's house at 5.30 for the trip. Um, as they got near Zamora, there was a certain section of road that crossed Interstate 505. Huh. Interstates. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so there's Interstate 505, and upon taking this road, they reached an area that had a yellow flashing light and a sign that read, uh, said Road Narrows. Um, from there, they had to take Cash Creek Bridge, um, which obviously, if you didn't guess, crosses Cash Creek. No. Yeah. Since when? Uh, since the 70s, at least. Oh, shit. <laughs> I gotta check up on my Creek Bridge roads. <laughs> um, it was when the sisters had crossed the bridge and headed for the turnoff to their home. Uh, they noticed that they were not getting to the turnoff. They had no idea as to why, but they were just not getting to the turnoff. It just wasn't. It happening. wasn't there. They just kept they going. They kept kept moving. Um, they had no idea why. Um, and at this point in the drive, the sisters uh, began to get tired. Um, and then Judy and one of her sisters said almost in unison, I wonder why we're not getting off the turnoff. Hmm. Yeah, that's... Uh, so they're aware. I'm pretty sure that's rule number one of uh, you experiencing high strangeness is that you uh, don't say anything in the moment. Otherwise, it gets worse. Well... Um, so does it get worse? <laughs> uh, so <laughs> it was in that moment they suddenly noticed that they had somehow got turned around and they saw the same yellow flashing light and sign upon recrossing Cash Creek Bridge. Mm. Um, now here, here in the paranormal world, um, as a ghost hunter and uh, uh, a, 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 an individual who studies this phenomena, yeah, this is called um, the the, Bucky the Bucky. well. <laughs> That's very funny, but um, this is called a um, super ultra mega you're fucked moment. <laughs> so <laughs> mine's no different. No, it's different, dude. <laughs> a fucky wucky is when you when you fart yourself off at an airplane. <laughs> yeah, that's a fucky wucky. Um, that's gotta be terrifying though, dude. Yeah, you're just like, oh, it's weird we're not making this turn off, and then all of a sudden you're just like, is that the same fucking sign? Yeah. Oh man. Um, it was at this point that they uh, could barely keep their eyes open. They eventually managed to get home, but upon entering and expecting to be home by 10, 1030, they discovered they got home at midnight. Oh. They left at 530 for a drive that should have taken two and a half, three hours. Hmm. They got home at midnight. So they lost time 
Yes. Um, Classic alien abduction. It means that the group had lost four and a half hours uh, from when they should have been home. Jesus Christ. They lost four and a half hours. It's fucking bad. Uh, Their parents, concerned uh, at the fact that they had not gotten home by the time they intended, were surprised by their lateness Mm -hmm. um, and asked what had kept them. um, And obviously, she was like, I don't fucking know. I don't know what just happened. Um, Their father thought that they had been drinking or partying and made up the story of them recrossing the bridge and the missing four and a half hours. Uh, But Dan and and Becky backed up... um, the story like mm-hmm. so it was all three of them they were like i don't fucking know what happened that was four and a half hours yeah i mean th- that's a really common thing when it comes to um alien abductions is that we see this this missing time yeah and it's this is really unique with the sense of like they don't necessarily experience anything other than the high strangeness at least in this moment they don't they haven't experienced the. Uh, you know the tractor beam, or the, yeah. the the beam of light, or something like that. They're just like driving. They're like, hmm, it's weird. This turn's not here. And then all of a sudden, they're like, that's the same sign. And they're like, hmm, that's really weird. And then they just continue on their drive. There's there seems to be no, at least at this point, from what they're describing. Yeah, they can't account for that four and a half hours at all. Yeah, which which is which is really weird because there's no, there's nothing that like coincides with it as far as they can remember yeah and there's no like there's no they don't see anything they don't see anything there's no it's not like um well, i'm forgetting the name now betty and barney hill uh yeah i mean betty and barney hill is a good example where they they they, they see a physical craft and, then and have then, the loss of time and everything like they there's they, there's things that coincide with it it's not just the loss yeah of and th- this is just pure high strangeness yeah. at this point where it's just this fucking weird road Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, why are we missing time on this road? And I'm sure they've been down a billion times. Yeah. So it's pretty spooky. Here's a picture the- of her in a newspaper clipping from that exact, uh, from this instance. Yes. Cool vest. <laughs> yeah. It's very it 70s. looks like she worked very. at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So Dan and Becky backed up their sister as they too remembered the second trip over the bridge and insisted that they left straight from their grandmothers and did not stop at all. Mm -hmm. Their father then proceeded to get out a map to see if there was some way the girls could have made like a big circle. Judy proceeded to tell her father that this was ridiculous as she was familiar with the area, especially since she had lived there her entire life and there was no way that they could have ended up in a circle. Sure. This was added to the fact that she was going in a straight line on a familiar road. I don't think you can go in a circle. (laughs) Straight line. Well, you see, well, you see, when you're driving down the road, mm-hmm. you're te- Are you really driving down a road? Yes. Are you really? Yes. Are you sure you're not mm-hmm. some sort of alien simulation? You yeah. like that George Norrie where he's like, "So tell me, uh, are roads actually straight?" <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a straight road in my entire life. All the roads I see have a little do it you know <laughs> they're a little <laughs> <laughs> the ro- the roads are a little <laughs> turned what did you think i meant <laughs> huh <sighs> i didn't i didn't mean anything <laughs> it was you um yeah so her father upon checking the map found that she was right as there was no road that would have led back to the yellow light and sign let alone the bridge mm-hmm The strangeness of the night was also added to the fact that Judy's car did not have enough gas put in it to allow for a six hour trip. And yet she was able to make it home with the intended amount of gas remaining. Hmm. So that's pretty fucking weird. When they just abducted him, they're just like, you can pull up to pop number one for me, please. (laughs) It's like, would you like your windshield clean? And they're they're very just like con- slam a fucking alien on it. They're just like, <laughs> <laughs> very considerate. Um, <laughs> it's, very, it's very 1940s, you know, <laughs> like yeah. gas station attendant, where it's like some little slime monster, and they're just like, 
<laughs> the road in the distance. <laughs> now your windshield will be forever clean. <laughs> it's also bulletproof. It's part of it. <laughs> <laughs> so the girl's family decided to let it go. Um with the exception of calling the girl's grandmother to see if they did leave at 5.30, which she confirmed. Um, and they forgot about it. Yeah. You know? It yeah. Was weird. Just a weird experience? Yeah. yeah. That is until three years later, when Danon and Judy were watching television, when an inkling of what happened to them that night seemed to just permeate in oh their God. minds. Judy, I remember. I remember. We got, we went past the light, right? Mm -hmm. And then we just started smoking so much DMT. <laughs> like, just an ungodly amount of DMT. <laughs> That's not what happened, right? No. Oh, fuck. Right. <laughs> There's um, something a lot more horrifying. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. I'm ready for the mannequin. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I got to. Uh, All right. Yes. So they were watching the film Escape to Witch Mountain, specifically the scene where the RV was being lifted up the ground. Um, and upon watching the scene, both Judy and Danon began to feel uneasy as if there was some sense of deja vu at the scene. Oh, this was the start of her coming to the realization that something strange had happened. Obviously. Well, yeah. <laughs> Um, sometime after this, Judy had seen a UFO in Yolo, California. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's right next to Weed, California. <laughs> Yolo. It's probably not, but I'm going to look it up anyway <laughs> while Taylor continues. Um, which is 10 miles north of Woodland. Weed, California. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Whoa, dude. <laughs> Fucking blew my mind, brother. Um, so... Uh, Yellow California is 10 miles north of Woodland, where Judy was visiting friends at the time. It was 1130, and she was um, on her way back to town when she saw a strange object that was changing colors. The object was originally a deep white light uh, that was incredibly bright. Then it proceeded to change to a deep orange color, and then... Um, the object hovered over some power lines near a gravel pit, and her first reaction was... Gee, they must have gotten some new lights at the gravel pit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That, that's very small town centric. <laughs> yeah, We're like, oh, oh, would you look at that? You know, they got some new lights over there. They did. <laughs> I like. I like. It. Where, where, where did this take place? Uh, this, this is in uh, Yolo, California. So, okay, so, so it's, they're not Midwestern. That's right. I, I forgot we just did a whole bit about that. Uh, so <laughs> she just, but it's, it just feels Midwestern. It does. It feels like, like small town oh, Midwest. Oh, look at that! They got a nice little. Oh, I got a little light on there. They change colors. They change cool. colors, and they're giving me fucking goddamn sunburns. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> also, it's three hours from Weed, California. Oh, okay. Just enough time. Which... Just enough time. Listen. Just enough time to smoke all your weed and come back. Mm -hmm. um, what do you say? <laughs> yes. To be fair, on the... West Coast, that's not very far at all. Like, yeah. I know that sounds like a long time to probably to people on, like, the East Coast. <laughs> yeah. And, like, to uh, cross, cross the pond. Cross the pond. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Where, like, you can go, so you, you can travel, and, like, to three different countries in that time frame. Uh, but the West Coast is big. <laughs> Dude, the, the, America is huge. We're getting, it's going to be a tangent for a second. <laughs> Uh, I, was, I, was, I, I was talking to one of my buddies who was from Wales. Yeah. And I'm talking about how small his country is compared to the U.S. Yeah. And I was like, I'm like, how long does it take to drive across the country? He's like, I don't know, like an hour, maybe, depending on traffic, maybe a little bit more. And I was like, if you drive 10 hours across Texas, you're still in Texas. Yeah. yeah. That's just how it is here. Um, but um, YOLO is just um, to the northeast a little bit by about a couple hundred like couple hundred plus miles or so, a couple hundred miles from San Francisco. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's you know, kind of deserty. Yeah, it's kind of up there by all them hippies, especially in the 70s. You know? It looks like yeah. it's by Sacramento. There's a lot of acid going around there, like Hate Ashbury, you know. It's yeah. Like great Charles Manson's out there fucking jerking people off, dude. It's by Santa Rosa and Stockton. Yeah, it's by, by, by Sacramento, okay? okay. You were yeah. right. 
So like, yeah, it's it's. So they're driving through Yolo, California. Well, this is this is where she sees the UFO. She sees the UFO. This is after. She's, the she's not like this is years. Oh, Yolo. <laughs> Yolo. She's not like hitting like fun no. little emotes. It's not no. on camera. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. Doesn't it. matter I'm now. Not, I'm not Marty, doing, I'm you not, missed I'm it. I'm not doing it again. I'm not. A, I'm not a little monkey. I'm not a little monkey for your little for your little dance Mannequin, for your little ready. for Mannequin. your fucking party. Mannequin. I'm not Get a little Mannequin. monkey. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. Now that the mannequin I'm like yolo. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! This, is, this show is so fucking stupid sometimes. <laughs> Um, so uh, I think that we're dumb on the dock, but sometimes I'm just especially super <laughs> dumb on here. Um, we, when the camera turns on, we reverse uh, roles. Usually, I'm the one off camera. I'm pretty stupid. Well, <laughs> but I, like everyone thinks I sound like so like smart when I'm on here, and I'm like, who says that? Uh, uh. <laughs> yep. Uh, Charlie said that one time. Well, that's what Charlie thinks. <laughs> I've, met, I've met Charlie. He goes, you're pretty smart. <laughs> I think, I think well, you're said, pretty smart. He said that before. He's like, you sound and then like he very like, professional. Can I eat that? <laughs> and he starts trying to eat the mics again. He was, he, he My said. My fifth fucking pop socket this week. <laughs> he's been here once. <laughs> he said it in the past. He's like, she sounds like very like. Yeah, well, I know Charles is listening to this, and you're fat and you're wrong. <laughs> like, like he's, Doc he's, Charles? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. He's, he said gonna, it before. I'm going to get a message after this. <laughs> after this comes out, dude. Um, I like how like there's like there's a bunch of people watching this, too. And you guys, you, go watch the doc, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. He's, yeah. he's, 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 he's like, he, he's heavy set. Like, heavy set. Heavy set. Loves drag racing and being fat all the time. And hockey. And hockey. He also really likes turnstile. And turnstile. You were getting turnstile. I don't know how you can he forget has t- it. He has tism. <laughs> all right. He mentions turnstile like 10 times every time I see him, and it's only for like half an hour. Like, I see him like half an hour after yeah, the doc. Have you ever heard of turnstile? For- <laughs> Listen, well, this, this isn't the doc. All right. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to hate on Charles right now. It's not as fun. I like doing it directly to his face. <laughs> you know, it's like when Marty's not here, we put the guinea pig in his seat. Yeah. It's funny every every so often. <laughs> it's fair. But who doesn't love a guinea pig? It's true. Anyway, so um, she sees these orange so she lights. she sees this object. And she goes, they must have got new lights in the gravel pit. Yes. Um, and she watched the object change in color from white to orange and back to white again three times. Kind of construction-y, yeah. Upon it doing it the third time, the object rose up and shot straight up into the sky and disappeared from sight, just like a construction site. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was like, I was thinking more like construction lights, where they're orange and white, they kind of flash. You know. <laughs> and then yeah. they disappear. Yeah, they go. Uh, there goes an F one fifty with a light bar, and there it goes up into the sky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just like construction equipment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. She was shocked by this, and upon returning home, she instantly called her friend. Um, Bitch, you're not going to believe this. Who she had just <laughs> left from and told her about the UFO sighting. Um, her friend responded after the tale saying, oh, I believe it. Did you ever figure out what happened to you and your sisters when you lost your four and a half hours of time? Which is so weird to bring up. Yeah. <laughs> like right after a UFO. She's like, bitch, you got abducted. Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. Figure that's it a, out. That's a crazy story. <laughs> You ever, you ever seen Earl's dog? <laughs> you know, just he's bringing up some d- random shit. But no, that's highly relevant. Uh, which, which, how do you not connect the fucking dots in your brain about that? I don't that? know, man. So, go, if I lost four and a half fucking hours, dude, I would spend the rest of my life figuring out what happened. Yeah. So Judy replied, no. And thought it was odd that her friend brought it up, then realized it was because of her friend's interest in UFOs. Her friend during this conversation then suggested that her and her sisters had gone through a time warp. Um, but Judy had no idea what she meant. Uh, so her friend told her to get a hold of uh, our favorite friend here, J. Allen Hynek. <laughs> oh, Dr. J. Allen Hynek. Yes. The Heine man. Yeah. I don't think anyone's called him that. It's me, Dr. J. Allen Hynek. You got fucking aliens? Guess what? <laughs> it's the planet Venus. <laughs> so, no, Judy. Hynek is. 
he's that. He's, he's the man. He's the man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Judy I'm took like her that fucking Frenchman. <laughs> Judy took her friend's advice and told him about her experience and what he asked what he thought and acquired about time warps. Heineck replied to Judy and uh, explained that the proper term for a time warp was a time lapse, and he did not think that this is what she had experienced. Um, and he said he'd like to send some <laughs> investigators to come talk to her. Heineck then proceeded to get Paul Cerny of Northern California branch of MUFON to come investigate. Oh, dude. Fucking MUFON, dude. Listen, one of these days, brother, one of these days when the podcast, when we take off, you know, when it, when it's, when it's, I mean, we do really good and we fucking love you for it. But, um, you know, once we're able to do this as a career, you know, I can have a little free time outside of writing episodes and being a fucking idiot on the internet. Mm -hmm. I'm joining MUFON, dude. And I'm going to every single call and just being like, you saw a fucking satellite. <laughs> you saw birds. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I'm not doing that. Okay. Uh, Cerny first proceeded to talk to her boss, Joe, to get uh, an idea about her character and specifically to see if she was uh, like a flake, um, which her boss replied she was not. From this and from talking to her, he told her that he would get a hypnotist to come and help investigate as there was a chance that she was abducted. All right. First step, I'm bringing in a hypnotist, okay? You okay with that, Judy? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm bringing in a hypnotist. Okay. I'm bringing in an illusionist. Why? I'm bringing in a guy who I know who, that, who is, he rants for the nice bounce castles. I'm bringing in a petting zoo. I'm bringing in Alaskan racing pigs. Okay. Okay. Maybe get some catering on the side, you know? Mm-hmm. What do you think? I really want to see the Alaskan racing pigs. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's a joke? I actually do want to see the so, all Alaskan racing pigs. <laughs> nope. Well, I'm getting off topic again, and I do apologize for those who are actually interested in the story because it's a very fun story. Uh, I was looking at it. I was looking. I'm looking at some general jobs, just kind of scrolling through the other day, last night specifically, <laughs> and I see a thing that says like wanted for you know like management thing, blah 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, like it's kind of cool. And then I look at the company. And it says Alaskan racing pigs. You take, you take little pigs. Did you apply? Like, no, because <laughs> I told him he should. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm not working for Alaskan racing pigs. You already work for Alaska already. Yeah. <sighs> dude, never said that, dude. Don't say that. Don't say that on the air, dude. I want listen. I don't care about one kind of pig, dude. <laughs> All right. I don't care about one kind of pig, dude. That's it. I can't. I can't think of a cartoon pig. <laughs> Porky. Porky. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was killed. He was killed in a car crash last year. Just kind of. <laughs> should I, so should get, I get back into? Yeah. Just. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay. Uh, I just miss him, dude. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so Cerny said, one way we can find out for sure is to regress you and find out what happened at that time. Mm -hmm. Judy said that upon hearing that, her heart jumped into her throat and she thought, oh no, he's got to be kidding. No way. Uh, Cerny contacted Alvin Lawson, uh, who is an English professor at Cal State in Long Beach. And after talking to uh, Cerny, Lawson got a hold of hypnotist Dr. W.C. McCall who uh, joined him as they flew up to Woodland to visit Judy at her apartment. Carol, uh, Judy's friend, was there along uh, with some other people who were there to make sure that things were on level with the investigation. Uh, and soon Judy discovered that things were, um, and that all of the researchers involved were polite and professional in their conduct. It was here that they proceeded to uh, do the regression when they regressed her she remembered the trip down the road and then suddenly she noticed that there was a sudden coldness and void around the car uh, it's, it's atmosphere <laughs> nice. um, 
then she remembered that the car was suddenly lifted straight up off the road and into a UFO. Fuck. <laughs> Usually they, they just fucking like get over the top of the car and then there's like and then they fucking just suck them out of the car. Nope. And then beam them back in later. No, on. the whole car went. But they're like just some like dude. He's just like it was probably some FNG dude, some fucking new guy. You know, just like Cleveland, make sure you get him, uh, get them uh, out of the car and then abduct them. <laughs> and then he's just like, you got it, boss. I'll do it. And then it's like. And all of a sudden, there's just a fucking full size car inside the docking bay, and they're like, "Jesus Christ!" <laughs> like, all right, this is fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. fine. Just, it's fine. Just get him out of the car. Um. So, so they get sucked up into the ship. Yeah. So they are in the UFO, and then once the car was in the craft, she seemed to pass out, um, and she had the feeling of being floated out of the car and placed in a room. Upon waking up, she found herself lying on a hard, seemingly stainless steel table. Uh, but we know aliens is probably some fucking metal that we don't have. It's, it's probably uh, Xenthoric, uh, Titanic. Okay. You know, it's, um, you would guys, you guys would call it um, stainless steel. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> they just bought it. They just bought sheets of stainless steel. <laughs> so she was laying on this table covered with a sheet in a round room with a ring of windows through which she could see stars. The feeling of cold, even with the covering of the sheet, was intense. Uh, her sisters were gone, seemingly placed in other rooms. As she attempted to move, she discovered uh, that there was something restraining her head, which stopped her from moving around. I don't like that. Um, from her surroundings, she was able to see two bucket seats with three lights over top each seat facing a console with a panel that had a gear-like shift. Um, and that to her left was a table with instruments like probes similar to uh, those seen in hospitals, as well as a black box with speaker holes. We're going to shove these up my butt, and you're going to watch. (laughs) (laughs) Um, As she looked around, she saw her captors at the end of the table. There were three short beings, which wore gray-colored suits that completely covered them. On their faces, they wore masks, uh, which Judy said were similar to ones worn by pilots during World War II. It's so good. It's it's that and not some like kink shit. <laughs> like, it's like, not a gimp suit it's mask. Not like, it's not like a pup play mask. <laughs> He's like, call me Rufus. <laughs> I hate everything call, about me. You, you're going to call me Rufus. <laughs> I was hoping to get Marty with that, dude. <laughs> yeah. Call me Rufus. Call me Rufus. <laughs> They're like, all right, dude. All right. We, all we, right. we, we, we've decided to dress up like you earthlings. <laughs> Unfortunately, we went to Los Angeles first. Then <laughs> one uh, he walks in with a assless chaps and a gimp suit, and he's like, <laughs> "It's just like we got, we got to go handle something in the other room." Um, so they're wearing these masks that are similar to the ones worn by pilots during World War II, yet from them she was able to see the being's eyes, which were big and round. Uh, and yellow <laughs> or orange in color. Interesting. So not really gray like. No. But they, I mean, I'll, when you first started describing, I'm like, sounds like fucking grays to me. Yeah. But then it is kind of suspicious. So suspicious. to her left, she was surprised to see a being that looked very much like a human girl. The girl was five foot four, five foot six, um, and had shoulder length black hair, blue eyes, fair skin, and medium build. To her right, she saw a long hallway, and as she stared in that direction, she saw the most terrifying part of her abduction. Um, An entity was slowly approaching. This is the being she would call the witch doctor. It's me, the witch doctor. I'm almost there. (laughs) I'm all, Judy, you there? Are you awake yet? I'll just wait. Judy! (laughs) 
This creature. I don't want to come in if you're not awake yet. It's not as scary if, I, if you're not awake yet. Oh, just wait. It's fucking terrifying. Uh, I'm already horrified. <laughs> this is the most anything alien abduction related is fucking horrifying to me. I hate oh, it. Oh, it gets worse. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I, I I was almost concerned that it wasn't gonna get worse. You know, I was like, oh well. It I can't guess get I, any worse. Does she named the guy the fucking witch doctor, Tay. I, I'm guessing that it's probably going to get worse. <laughs> you know, he wasn't like, that's my pookie bear right there. He came in from the right hand side and he gave me a little kiss on the forehead. And then he said, it's okay, honey. We're going to send you back now. Sorry for the intrusion. His name is the fucking witch doctor. I, I'm guessing he's not a very nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, it's a good thing that me and Marty weren't on the ship because there's another guy on the ship and his name is the Dick Mangler 9000. <laughs> guess what the fuck he does? I have a good guess. <laughs> yeah, dude. He fucking takes and puts him on a table and hits him with a hammer. <laughs> Why? Because science. Because, because science. I what just what remembered, happened. Fred, we, we were watching a TV show, and when I saw a hammer, it all came back to me. I was laying to the left of me. I saw the dick I was in the, I was in the living room watching Tool Time with my flat balls. <laughs> <laughs> Get back to me, Tim, the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> it was an alien that looked like Tim, the Tool Man Taylor, crushing my balls. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Okay, Are you ready to hear more about the Witch Doctor? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, we're gonna hear about this fucking sweetheart. All right, so. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah, tears by <laughs> this, this being to Judy was hideous and terrifying. Really shocking. <laughs> what gave it away? <laughs> it was about six or seven feet tall, and its head was bulbous and larger compared to the rest of its body. No need to bully this guy, but okay. um, it was shaped similarly to a light bulb. His uh, head was shaped like a light bulb. Yeah, albeit broader and more round at the top. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so just like. <laughs> yeah. Counts like toad. Yeah. yeah. Toad like head. Um, it had eyes that to Judy were insect like, specifically like those of grasshoppers. Oh, so it's like um, an insect creature. They were long and took up a good portion of the face, specifically from uh, where the eyebrows of a person should be um, on, a, on a person, uh, and then to the cheeks of where, like, some, where the cheeks would be on a human. Mm hmm. Um, these eyes were also transparent. Um, That's good. So he's probably so this horrifying creature walks up, and probably gets inches away from her face, and just like, "Be not afraid." <laughs> <laughs> it is I, <laughs> Witch Doctor. <laughs> um, Have you seen my brother, the Ball Mangler? <laughs> yeah. You guys are really lucky that you're women right now. Yeah, dude. But, Let me tell you, you got me and not him. Well, it might be a fucking creature she would call Uncle Lester, which <laughs> none none of us want to be around, dude. Um, it's just a it's just a fucking. That's a whole different kind of abduction. Yeah, it's a fifty year old <laughs> Brooklyn based man who's very creepy. Oh God! He's you like, get an Amber Alert for a spaceship. He just that comes has up the... and he's like, "Hey there, what's going on? Are you getting abducted?" <laughs> an like, Amber right. Alert for a red spaceship with the license plate that says. Number one uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Last seen trailing cans of space beer behind it. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, the eyes were transparent and Judy could see that the creature had long red pupils like slits um, and could see various red veins scattered in the jelly filled ocular sockets. I hate that. Uh, the creature had two large and long holes for nostrils. Um, <clears throat> where the creature's mouth and chin were kind of like kind of a mask that covered the creature. COVID. The creature had a five-fingered hand. Space COVID. Um, and the being wore a turtleneck type outfit that covered its full, albeit human-like form, uh, except a portion of the neck. 
Uh, the creature was hairless, and the skin of the creature was pale, white, and translucent. Judy could see all of the creature's veins and arteries. Judy, at this point, was not afraid. Uh, Judy had not been afraid during her abduction, but once she saw this entity uh, begin to approach, she began to cry and become hysterical. I mean, listen. This, this. I is, get it. <clears throat> this oh, is, do you have you have a photo of it. That's a drawing. Of, if 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 uh, if here, uh, switch it to Taylor's cam. And see if she can like turn her phone. Worst case, we can just put it in. Yeah. Look that, at that. That looks like something I draw when I draw when I was like five years old. Yeah, that's great. That's, he's wearing a turtleneck. Or here, sw- here, let me see real quick. Switch to cam. <laughs> Look at this fucking ugly mug, dude. <laughs> Look at this piece of shit. Be not afraid. <laughs> the side of the witch My doc. Phone's gonna turn off. There we go. That's fine. <laughs> Just, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Here's the rest of the episode. Be not afraid. Um, I gotta find where I was now. Okay. So. So. That guy's pretty fucking creepy. So, He's not a very nice looking fellow. No. And it's honestly, dude, it's kind of fucked up that she would hate him because of his looks. What, what if he has a, a sparkling personality? You'll find out. Um, he's just like, <laughs> just super nice, super polite. His name is the witch doctor. He's I'm misunderstood. Now, my brother on the other <laughs> <laughs> gonna see. He's going to give you balls and then crush them with a hammer. <laughs> That's just what he does. We can let him do it because he's the only one with a hammer. <laughs> he's the autistic one. <laughs> <laughs> he's hyper into drag racing right now in hockey. So during the hypnotic regression, the researchers have um, brought her through this moment several times to glean more information, but it created so much terror for her. She finally said, I don't want to see that guy anymore. And refused to say anything further about the encounter um, until they let her go past that point. Um, during her abduction, the witch doctor, however, could not have been skipped over. Um, and while she began to cry out in fear, uh, the human-looking girl to her left began to say, "It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He's it's down- okay. He's, he's not. He's not gonna do anything. You're just what are you freaking out for? He's not gonna do anything." Um. The witch doctor at this point also began to uh, communicate to Judy, and he did this through telepathy, because of course he did, Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's not fucking terrifying at all. Yeah. Um, And he told Judy no harm will come to her, and as he spoke, the voice sounded machine-like, like it came from a megaphone. And is there, does he have lines in here? Does he need me to read something? Hmm? 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 Uh, I mean, he all he, all he, all he says is it's okay. It's oh. okay. It's okay, Judy. It's okay. Yeah. I am definitely not going to harvest all of your organs um, systematically. So the witch doctor approached <laughs> Judy and put its hand on her head, repeating the phrase, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, as the witch doctor continued to talk to Judy, the female entity continued to also say, it's okay, Judy. It's okay. Judy in that moment thought, how the fuck does she know my name? <laughs> I did not tell her my name. I could not understand why they knew my name. Um, Judy, you're wearing a name tag. It says, hello, my name is Judy. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> she then thought, well, shoot. They know how to pick up uh, pick me up off the ground and take my car off the ground, then they certainly know our names and they knew a way of finding out. Like, she was yeah. like, you know what, actually, no, I don't even need to question it. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Um, she was then examined by the entities in which the entities looked um, inside her ears, intently studied her feet, and removed urine from her through a catheter. Fucking wild. Yeah. Um, Judy had one arm or hand bound so that she could not move it. Um, and at times the restrictions from her head were gone. Uh, at one point the female being passed the witch doctor a container filled with a colorless liquid that she couldn't see through. A colorless liquid that she couldn't see through. Mm-hmm. That's uh, 
weird. That's very strange. Um, at another point during the examination, the beings placed a heavy metal machine over her eyes she, so she could not see. And upon doing this, she was able to hear a quiet motor running inside. Um, you ever used the VR? <laughs> 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 it hasn't been invented yet. Um, so she had thought that this device might have been a brain reading machine. Um, the feeling of extreme cold, which she felt at times was alleviated, but be while being poked and prodded, she felt shaky and also experienced pain in her side and had incredible headaches as well as difficulty breathing. During the examination, the three entities with the World War II like masks mm -hmm. never left the foot of the table and during that examination she had the feeling uh, that someone was behind her that she couldn't see the witch doctor was notice, uh, was noticeably the entity in charge and seemed to lead the examination Judy would notice that the beings would look up at each other as if they were talking but she could hear nothing um, it was from this that she felt they were communicating telepathically to mm -hmm. each other Judy um, would describe the experience, quote, it was like I was a guinea pig. They just wanted to see what was going on with our bodies or something. I thought that maybe it was like a scientific physical examination kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They treated me like I was, like we have the apes. We have mice and rats that we use for experiments. I felt like I was being treated as a lower level level or lower class or lower form of life than they were. It was like I was a dog and they were a master type of thing. That's, uh, that's horrifying. Yeah. Um, it was during this examination that she suddenly thought she heard one of her sisters calling out in distress from another room on the ship. The ball smasher's here! <laughs> He's here! <laughs> um, she was incredibly concerned but not certain that both of her siblings were in rooms but could do nothing to find out. Once the entities were done examining Judy, she was lifted up by one of the f uh, by four of the masked beings, which were much smaller than her. They grabbed her um, essentially one arm, one leg. Like It was like each was it was like a little something. grabbing over yeah. appendages. Yeah. yeah, so one per Extremity. I was I was able to find a uh, picture of the uh, the Dick Mangler nine thousand. Oh, good. It looks like this. Okay. Now, Marty. <laughs> um, I I just I want you to be truthful, Marty. <laughs> okay. Did you draw that? <laughs> no, that's a, <laughs> that's a high definition photo. Um. I. I. I I I really like that the witch doctor alien's brother, the dick mingler. I really like that there's apparently just a little white square behind him. Yeah. Um, and that the it's, it's, it's weird it's up in outer space. I like that his <laughs> his hammer has a little white end. Yeah. Yeah. So now, are we putting this on the fridge for him? <laughs> yeah, we're putting it on that fridge. <laughs> It doesn't even make it to the big fridge. <laughs> no, it makes it on the beer fridge. Because <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> it's the Dick Mangler 9000. We gotta start hitting them more. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they proceeded to carry her back to her car. Um, upon reaching her car, the beings proceeded to throw Judy back in the car <laughs> in a way that was so perfect. She ended up uh, completely upright behind the steering wheel. Oh. They fucking yeeted her, but somehow yeeted her they so were like, perfectly that she yolo. Back in her seat. The witch doctor was like, like, take her back to her vehicle. <laughs> Get him out of here. And then he they're was like, 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 right away, boss. And then they grab her. They're like, up, up, up. <laughs> she just like throw her <laughs> even the car. She just lands over and they're like, that is not how that, that's the first that that's ever happened. Up top, boys. <laughs> there's all, there's all, there's all, oh, it's there like the yeah, yeah, space yeah, yeah. equivalent of yeah. a bottle flip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like, oh. <laughs> all right, let's get the rest of them. Um, so when she was in the car, she noticed that her sisters were not there. So she proceeded to sit there for a long time and began to get worried. Soon, uh, she looked over to the passenger seat and there sat her sister. 
who seem to have materialized out of from, from nowhere. Nice. That's cool. Um, and then her other sister uh, was in the back seat, also having seemingly materialized. They did not enter the car through the door, and, nor did she see them coming. The next thing Judy knew, she was back at the sign with the flashing yellow light. Whoa, trippy. Have you heard of the new Glorb talk trend? Car flipping? With humans? No, dude, I haven't. Yeah. Is that part of a alien TikTok? Yeah, Glorb talk. A Glorb talk. I forgot. I forgot yeah. about Glorb talk, dude. I thought, I thought, I thought Glorbin. No, never mind. I'm going to hold my thought. <laughs> 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 never mind, dude. There was a thought there. There, there was definitely a, there was a doc thought. <laughs> <laughs> glorb, glorb. <laughs> oh, team just been Glorbin all day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I <laughs> fucking I got I glorbed over my hands, dude. Ooh. Um, so Judy's encounter was kept quiet for some time. Uh, only a select few, and eventually Bud Hopkins later heard about the uh, encounter through Ted Blocher, who found similarities to the witch doctor to the entity reported in Stephen Kilburn's encounter. Um, Judy would be a part of a panel of abductees at the 1979 MUFON UFO proceedings where she discussed her abduction. In her written account, um, the events in The Road to Strange, UFO, Aliens, and High Strangeness, Judy describes a deep desire to be re-hypnotized to find out more about that night. She now has mixed feelings about the event um, as sometimes she's glad she went through and other times she is not. She, since uh, the encounter has developed the feeling of somebody watching her as well. Um, and she has become jittery because of that, obviously. Yeah. Um, and she also wonders if she has had other encounters since that time. Her sisters, however, want nothing further to do with the event and are terrified current day and that my friends is the abduction story i have for you wow that was very fun it was very weird it was very weird maybe um we will if it is long enough for an episode talk about uh stephen kilburn yeah, yeah, Stephen Kilburn is definitely, I mean, if, if it's related, I wonder how much related it is. Well, apparently the witch doctor makes an appearance, so. Well, is the ball crusher 9000, the dick mangler, was his name? Yeah, it's the dick, dick mangler, mangler 9000. You are really, uh. I forget my own bit sometimes, dude. You're really struggling. I'm out here just fucking making moves, brother. You know? Yeah. My balls smashed. Mangling dicks. Yeah. Mangling dicks, brother. Mangling your dicks lately, partner? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like the worst cowboy movie. It's like, you, rang <laughs> you mangling your dicks there, partner? <laughs> um, that was fun. That was horrifying. That was fun. Yeah. An actual and somewhat not as horrifying, but as I didn't go as manic as I thought it was going to. Well, you did kind of go off about the I mean, dick mingler. I've though. got a few minutes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> got any comments about high strangeness? Don't even fuck certain high strangeness, dude. You're not ready. I mean, we what if High Strange is, is just the fact that aliens are presenting themselves around us and they're manipulating our reality? You ever think about that? <laughs> hmm? no. you, ever, you ever you ever have a fucking moment of High Strangeness where, like, you swear that that street sign is always said Southeast Killingsworth and all of a sudden it says whatever it says now? You ever think about that? <laughs> Sometimes they change signs. They fucking don't. Never, well, they, they, they did. They just didn't change. want to call it Killingsworth anymore. That's that's that part's true, but <laughs> you know, it's, it you know, there's there's think about all the weird moments in your life. You sure wasn't you weren't abducted by aliens? Are you positive? Are you really positive? Because I'm not. I had a very weird moment at Deja Vu the other day at the dog show. It was very odd. Yeah. Yeah. 
high strangeness. <laughs> Maybe it was from I, the time you were at the other dog show. No, <laughs> yeah. actually. I was here yesterday. <laughs> it was like, no. I was just in the exact spot yesterday. It was the, like the first day. I had a weird moment of deja vu while I was waiting at the total canine place. I don't know, dude. Shopping you know what they something? say deja vu is? What? It means an angel faked an orgasm in heaven. Do they? Who says yeah. that? That's what they say. Who is who, said that? Who, 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 Give me who, a name. They look it up. Google. <laughs> Google what do you mean, look it up? Look it up. You're the one with Google in front of you. Well, this one, you, you're going to have to look it up on your own time. What the fuck are you time. talking about? <laughs> what is happening? What is happening? Anyways. Uh, new episodes of the Doc coming out um, next week. We have a very special guest with us, and I'm very excited. I'm also very excited. He's going to be sitting in between me and Tay, and uh, I'm just going to yell and rant. Do you have an episode planned for next week? I have an idea. Okay. I don't even know who the guest is. It's a surprise. It's a surprise guest. Mr. Do I know the guest? <laughs> Probably not. Okay, then. It's I mean, not a you've actually. You've He's probably, probably seen their seen, work. Yes, you've probably seen her, their work. Her work? There. You ever seen We're gas? Just saying there. Have you ever seen Gas Station Blow Bang Three? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no. Then you know. probably do know their work. Yeah. But you pro- you may not know their name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Which is a shame because I fucking love this guy. Yeah. But he's going to be, we're going to have a very special guest next week. And I'm very excited to have him in studio. And if you're watching this, my dear friend, we'll see you soon. (laughs) Don't be creepy about it. We're going to see you. We're going to see you. No, I'm just fucking with it. Um, (laughs) But yeah. You're going to make him not come over. (laughs) Yeah. Well, somebody's going to come over. (laughs) Oh, shit. Okay. I'm going to start glorping. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going full manic right now. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you switch that cam, Marty. Marty didn't do it. I anything. saw you. Marty didn't do it. I saw you switch that fucking cam. <laughs> I saw you switch it. Anyway, um, we'll see. if some fun stuff to talk about. Um going to try to get back in a stream. I want to start doing some like HGO streams every week. Kind of get everybody involved and go both we'll, once we figure out a day, we'll start doing it. Um let's see. Fucking new MFA record coming out March 29th and your boys on it. Yes, sir. I'm very excited to get to join Marty and the rest of the goofballs in the MFA. Go check out the latest episode of The Doc. I know we got to get the other one out, and it'll probably be the most recent one will probably be out after this because we have to edit this one, and then we'll do The Doc, and then we'll do another Doc, and then probably HBO before that. But, you know, we'll figure it out. Time and a place. There's a schedule. But go watch The Doc Game Show, which was, or it was, what the fuck was that? The game show, the world's most, or the internet's most controversial game show that I hosted and it wrote. <laughs> So, if you want to send any hate letters or um, death threats, you can email us at hgopodcast at gmail.com. You should also tag Armando in that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just if, you, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, you might as well. I'll forward it to him. Um, you can you can uh, follow us on Instagram HGO Podcast. You can follow us on TikTok at Believe It or Not HGO Podcast. It's funny how that works. I should really kind of do that for the doc. It's always all fucking unison. But guess what? I'm not gonna do that. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram directly at I Hunt the Haunted, please do. And uh, if you guys got any voice acting or acting gigs, hit your boy up. I'm fucking looking in the market, baby. Tay? Hi. Uh, you can follow me at... Luna right Thrill. Luna Thrill. Oh, thanks, Marty. Oh, there we are. Uh, you can follow me at Lunar Thrill on Instagram and TikTok. Those are really the only ones I use. Uh, you can also follow our dog at Spirit the Turf. Spirit the Turf. I am still waiting for those photos to come back. I'm so, so excited for these photos. You have no idea. Oh, I'm so excited. They're going to be everywhere. I'm posting them literally everywhere. They're going to be so fun. Um, yeah, and I don't have anything happening. Uh, next month I'll be at the Albany Dog Show if anyone is in Albany and wants to see Spirit I'll be there 
Well, fun. Mr. Cowick. Follow me online at, at Manic Cam. Uh, wrong Cam, buddy. Oh, follow me online at go. Ghetto Feather. <laughs> there you go. And then follow him in real life, wherever he goes. Just a couple steps behind and always looking away as if you're not trailing him. Yeah, you never turn your back on the ocean. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? That's, I don't know. That's the funniest response I've heard in a minute. <laughs> Uh, remember to stay spooky. Stay haunted. And I'm a dick magla 9000. I'm going to fart in airplanes and smash your balls with a hammer. Great. Great. See ya. Bye.